take this time to gather some popcorn, hamburgers, hot dogs, maybe even dinner or whatever snacks you eat, and have a sit down in front of the TV, the computer, or even your cell phone, and enjoy the show. If it's Monday or Wednesday night, then it must be California Hogs Radio Night. Please take this time to gather some popcorn, hamburgers, hot dogs, maybe even dinner or whatever snacks you eat, and have a sit down in front of the TV, the computer, or even your cell phone, and enjoy the show. If it's Monday or Wednesday night, then it must be California Hogs Radio Night. Please take this time to gather some popcorn, hamburgers, hot dogs, maybe even dinner or whatever snacks you eat, and have a sit down in front of the TV, the computer, or even your cell phone, and enjoy the show. If it's Monday or Wednesday night, then it must be California Haunts Radio Night. Please take this time to gather some popcorn, hamburgers, hot dogs, maybe even dinner or whatever snacks you eat, and have a sit down in front of the TV, the computer, or even your cell phone, and enjoy the show. If it's Monday or Wednesday night, then it must be California Haunts Radio Night. Please take this time to gather some popcorn, hamburgers, hot dogs, maybe even dinner or whatever snacks you eat, and have a sit down in front of the TV, the computer, or even your cell phone, and enjoy the show. If it's Monday or Wednesday night, then it must be California Haunts Radio Night. Please take this time to gather some popcorn, hamburgers, hot dogs, maybe even dinner or whatever snacks you eat, and have a sit down in front of the TV, the computer, or even your cell phone, and enjoy the show. If it's Monday or Wednesday night, then it must be California Haunts Radio Night. Please take this time to gather some popcorn, hamburgers, hot dogs, maybe even dinner or whatever snacks you eat, and have a sit down in front of the TV, the computer, or even your cell phone, and enjoy the show. If it's Monday or Wednesday night, then it must be California Haunts Radio Night. Please take this time to gather some popcorn, hamburgers, hot dogs, maybe even dinner or whatever snacks you eat, and have a sit down in front of the TV, the computer, or even your cell phone, and enjoy the show. If it's Monday or Wednesday night, then it must be California Haunts Radio Night. Please take this time to gather some popcorn, hamburgers, hot dogs, maybe even dinner or whatever snacks you eat, and have a sit down in front of the TV, the computer, or even your cell phone, and enjoy the show. If it's Monday or Wednesday night, then it must be California Haunts Radio Night. Please take this time to gather some popcorn, hamburgers, hot dogs, maybe even dinner or whatever snacks you eat, and have a sit down in front of the TV, the computer, or even your cell phone, and enjoy the show. If it's Monday or Wednesday night, then it must be California Haunts Radio Night. Please take this time to gather some popcorn, hamburgers, hot dogs, maybe even dinner or whatever snacks you eat, and have a sit down in front of the TV, the computer, or even your cell phone, and enjoy the show. If it's Monday or Wednesday night, then it must be California Haunts Radio Night. Please take this time to gather some popcorn, hamburgers, hot dogs, maybe even dinner or whatever snacks you eat, and have a sit down in front of the TV, the computer, or even your cell phone, and enjoy the show. If it's Monday or Wednesday night, then it must be California Haunts Radio Night. Please take this time to gather some popcorn, hamburgers, hot dogs, maybe even dinner or whatever snacks you eat, and have a sit down in front of the TV, the computer, or even your cell phone, and enjoy the show. If it's Monday or Wednesday night, then it must be California Haunts Radio Night. Please take this time to gather some popcorn, hamburgers, hot dogs, maybe even dinner or whatever snacks you eat, and have a sit down in front of the TV, the computer, or even your cell phone, and enjoy the show. If it's Monday or Wednesday night, then it must be California Haunts Radio Night. Please take this time to gather some popcorn, hamburgers, hot dogs, maybe even dinner or whatever snacks you eat, and have a sit down in front of the TV, the computer, or even your cell phone, and enjoy the show. If it's Monday or Wednesday night, then it must be California Haunts Radio Night. Please take this time to gather some popcorn, hamburgers, hot dogs, maybe even dinner or whatever snacks you eat, 
and have a sit down in front of the TV, the computer, or even your cell phone and enjoy the show. If it's Monday or Wednesday night, then it must be California Haunts and Radio Night. Please take this time to gather some popcorn, hamburgers, hot dogs, maybe even dinner or whatever snacks you eat, and have a sit down in front of the TV, the computer, or even your cell phone and enjoy the show. If it's Monday or Wednesday night, then it must be California Haunts and Radio Night. Please take this time to gather some popcorn, hamburgers, hot dogs, maybe even dinner or whatever snacks you eat. And have a sit down in front of the TV, the computer, or even your cell phone, and enjoy the show. Hey, welcome to California Haunts Radio. My name is Charlotte, and I'm your host, and I'll be your host for the next hour. Uh, We are located in Sacramento, California at www.californiahaunts.org. And the radio show itself is www.CaliforniaHauntsRadio.com. Welcome tonight, and we've got a great guest lined up for you, Andrea Perone. You might recognize her from some famous movies, The Conjuring, and this, and she's got a great story to tell, and we've already had her on once. This is part two of, of a three-part, maybe a four-part interview, we'll see how it goes, um, that uh, we're doing with her, talk to her more about what's going on, because it's not only ghosties, she's had alien encounters and other things going on with her. So without further ado, I'm going to bring Andrea on in here. Hello. Hi, Charlotte. So great to join you again, dear. How's it going? It's going very well. I've been um, extremely busy. In fact, I just spoke with one of my producers a few days ago, and I said, I think we need to rename our company Global Pandemic Productions because, <laughs> you know, I'm, what we have accomplished in the last 16, 17 months is you know, over the moon. And I think it's because we were all housebound and we were stuck and we had to find a different way to circumnavigate the globe. And, you know, we've done it from our computers. I mean, all I can say is thank God that the internet did not crash when the world crashed down around us because it's the way that we've all communicated, stayed in contact, done our work. Um, and, um, and I, you know, I'm really, really glad that the World Wide Web held up through everyone jumping on it at once because they had that was our only option yeah i mean there were a lot of people on there and i remember there were a couple nights doing the show where it was draggy but we made it we made it through yeah so um we were here uh, about a month ago talking about the 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 house you know and uh, we were going to continue that a little bit because like i told everybody we're not only going to talk about the house we got another interview planned we're going to be talking about aliens and all kinds of things with you so I'm really excited and the um, fans are excited. I'm so glad. And it's, you know, it's wonderful co- to connect with new people because, you know, the paranormal community worldwide is quite extensive. Mm-hmm. Um, and every now and then I actually come across someone that doesn't know the true story behind the conjuring does not know who my family is, is not aware that we are anybody other than, characters in a very popular movie but they don't know that the true story is so much more intense and so much more involved and complicated that it it could never have been fleshed out in a two-hour feature film um and it was you know predominantly a, a fictionalized film because it was based on the case files of Ed and Lorraine Warren. Mm -hmm. Uh, And even though I was a consultant on the film and James Wan and all the producers, everybody read my books and they were like, oh, hell no. You know, we can't tell this truth because uh, it will run people out of the theater. It will just absolutely freak them out and they will run away. And, you know, I don't think of my books as, as a horror story at all. Um, I think of it as a as a, a deeply spiritual love story that has a wicked supernatural twist. And so, yeah, that's volume three. Uh, the whole series is House of Darkness, House of Light. 
um, volumes one, two, and three. It's almost 1,500 pages. Uh, it starts, volume one starts before we actually even move to the farm. And volume three ends after we have left the farm. And so once you read the entire trilogy, it, mm -hmm. um, it will enlighten you in a way that I don't think any other story out there can. I mean, you literally see the transformation that occurred from you, you meet my family in volume one as a perfectly normal family. And then you see everything that had to happen precisely the way that it did in order to <clears throat> catapult us to the farm. And then you get to watch my normal family become a paranormal family. And it is um, a striking revelation all in its own right. Um, and I think that one of the reasons why we had so much activity in the house was first of all, you know, a family of seven moved in, two young parents with five extremely overactive tomboyish little girls who were just brimming with energy and who, you know, brought our own perceptive gifts to that landscape and it it altered it fundamentally altered all of our lives none of us <laughs> reacted to it the same way uh we all had a different way of processing the events uh we all had a different way of coming to the realization that we were dwelling among the dead um, and to what extent that house was inhabited, to what extent it was shared space in the universe. And then after we left the house, I mean, we barely even talked about it amongst ourselves for 30 years. And then a bell went off in my head. It was like, now's the time. Now the world is ready for this. Now is the time. And, you know, I walked away from a job that I loved. Um, I was, uh, I worked as a therapeutic um, youth counselor uh, in a clinical setting uh, at, a, at a private school uh, for about a decade. Uh, I worked with developmentally disabled people, adults prior to that. Um, and prior to that, I owned a restaurant for 10 years. Prior to that, I owned a jewelry store um, in Georgia um, before I moved back to Rhode Island. I mean, I, I've worn a lot of hats in this life, but I will tell you one thing, Charlotte. The only place that has ever felt like home to me is that farmhouse. Yeah. Every place else has felt temporary, like I'm here for now, but that's home. Um, and I wandered around this world doing one thing and another thing and another thing for decades of my life mm -hmm. until I started telling our true story to the very best of my ability in an authentic and an organic way that incorporated all of the impressions and the memories of every member of my family so I call the trilogy a collective memoir because that's really what it is. And it was for me all about bringing the truth to light. That's what all of it was about. I have lived an unusual life. I have lived uh, an enlightened life. I had my paradigm shifted when I was a youngster. Mm -hmm. um, and it was a very personal thing for me. I came to understand that I can see interdimensionally, extra dimensionally, alter dimensionally, you know, uh, in a way that I presumed most people could. For the very longest time, I thought that everyone could see what I see. And it took me a very long time to come to grips with, to, to reconcile that there was something supremely different about me as an individual. 
Um, and it wasn't until I came to that realization and I was in my late forties when this happened that I realized why I had felt like a misfit on this planet for my whole life. And the reason is, is because I came to the understanding and the awareness that I am, I am in this world, mm -hmm. but I am not of this world. I'm not from here. Um, I consider myself a transplant. I consider myself a hybrid. I consider myself someone uh, with all the markers of such. Um, and it was the first time as I came to this self-awareness that I understood why I was so uncomfortable in 3D on this plane of action. And I find it incredibly oppressive and incredibly sad, um, uh, just filled with so much loss and grief and violence and upheaval and humanity is anathema to me. And yet I love humanity. I, I love the best of us. I loathe the worst of us. Mm -hmm. um, but I barely consider myself in the category of of us. I think that um, I was sent here. I, I, I think there was some clerical error made um, mm -hmm. off planet. Uh, you know, I've asked about that. Like, you know, really? Because what is this? And why am I here? Ever since I was a little, little child, I have memories that go back to literally before I could walk. I have a, an incredible memory bank that can take me back to really not long after my birth. And, um, and I've retained everything that I've ever experienced and had to assimilate that. And moving to the farmhouse, I think, is what pried wide open my third eye so that I could experience the fourth dimension and the fifth dimension and beyond. And now I get the hell out of here as often as humanly possible. As often as I can go off planet, I do. Because it's the only place that I'm free. It's the only place where I feel that uh, I do belong and where I have kind of a bird's eye view from above the radar. Um, of what's going on on earth. And I've come to the realization that earth functions as soul school for us. And unfortunately, even if you sit at the head of the class and take copious notes, soul school is a trial and it involves something that no school should involve. And that is that the test always precedes the lesson. We have to go through trial by fire. We are slow learners. We are fear-based carbon units. And we are in the process of assimilating our, our life experiences. Every single one of us is here at this time right now with purpose and reason. And every single one of us is experiencing it, this to forward the momentum of the spiritual evolution and revolution that is happening to the human race, a singular race, so that we can ultimately, hopefully, save ourselves from ourselves. Interesting. When you talk about going off planet, how do you do that? I don't know. But I do know that it doesn't involve a ticket or any <laughs> money out of my bank account, which I deeply appreciate, you know, especially during, you know, a pandemic where right. everything came to a screeching halt and, you know, all my money basically just evaporated within two to three weeks. I had 30 events that were booked for the year just dissipate into thin mm. air, right into the ether, gone, bye-bye, not coming back. Um. Uh, but no, I, I don't, um, I, I never 
say that I am abducted. I never go anywhere that I'm not willing to go. Mm -hmm. um, I have been to what I believe to be my home planet, um, which is somewhere in the cluster known as the Pleiades. Cool. Um, I know I have a very close friend who I know is from the exact same place that I am um, because we were talking at a, a symposium at the Star Wars Symposium once about four or five years ago. And she was describing this place that she had been that is a planet that has a blue atmosphere and it's every shade of blue that you can imagine. And then a hundred shades of blue that you've never seen before. And she's describing going into the atmosphere and she's, and as she's talking, she's like, it's, it's every shade of blue. It's blue on blue on blue on blue. And she says, and it has, and I finished her sentence and I said, two moons. And, and she's like, yes, that's it. And I said, the moment I looked in your eyes, I know, I knew the moment I looked in your eyes, I knew we were star sisters. I knew we were. And, wow. you know, in the research that's done in, you know, I guess I've been a ufologist before. Ufology was a term that was coined. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the vernacular in the paranormal shifts so regularly and so radically that uh, it's hard to keep up with the new language. But, um, you know, I've, I've been involved with this and it's been a part of my life, a part of my consciousness, a part of my being, mm -hmm. my incredible lightness of being um, since birth. And I possess, there are, you know, according to the researchers in recent years have, you know, come up with some really fascinating research on people who they consider to be hybrids, like, you know, mostly human, and yet there are other elements to us as well. Um, and I possess all three of the markers, all three, mm -hmm. um, in that I am a firstborn child, mm -hmm. um, and one of the markers is firstborn or only child. Mm -hmm. um, the second is blue or green eyes. And as you can see, I have like ultra blue eyes, which change color radically depending on my mood, depending on my stress level, depending on who I'm talking to, you know, my eye color will change. Um, I will get like a black ring around my eyes. I mean, my eyes are, are as fluid as the universe is, is in flux. Um, and, um, I have the RH negative blood factor, which human blood does not mutate. It was infused into the mm -hmm. human bloodline uh, approximately 60,000 years ago during the last ice age. Um, and so I have all three of those. And, you know, when I do a lecture in front of, you know, hundreds of people, I'll ask them, you know, are, are you a firstborn or an only child? And most of the hands go up. Are you, do you have blue or green eyes? Most of the hands go up. Do you have the mm -hmm. RH negative blood factor? About half of the hands go up and the other half don't know if they do or not because they never had their blood tested for that. Right. Um, and, um, and then I will, you know, my next logical question is, do you think you stumbled into the symposium by accident? Because I can guarantee you that you didn't. You were drawn to this information because this information is being imparted to help you identify yourself in the grand scheme of things and to determine who you are and why you are here. And so, you know, that, that blows some people's minds, but they get used to the idea relatively quickly uh, because they already know on some subliminal subconscious level, they already know. Um, and they are attracted, you know, we gather together like birds of a feather. Um, I am very selective about the, um, the conferences that I do around UFOs. Mm -hmm. um, I want to make sure that everybody that I'm lecturing with uh, that's going to be standing on the same stage that I'm standing on is authentic, is, you know, science-based, is, mm -hmm. you know, working for greater good, um, not conspiracy theorists. There are plenty of them out there, you know, really they can honestly, sayonara, you know, bye-bye. Mm -hmm. 
don't involve my galactic family in your conspiracy theories because I don't want to hear it because mm -hmm. they're not involved in your conspiracy theories. These are your machinations, your conjuring up of so-called facts. Um, and so I have a tendency to, um, to be uh, extremely selective with whom, with whom I engage in this community of people and researchers in particular. Um, and mostly I function, I fly solo above the radar. Um, you know, I, I stay out of the realm that I can be sucked down into. I, you know, I'm not a member of MUFON. I'm not a member of, of any organization that gathers and documents data. Um, I am an experiencer. I am a contactee. I am a hybrid. I'm here with a very specific purpose and, and message to impart um, it from, it's not about me. It's about the message. I'm just mm -hmm. the messenger. Um, it's, uh, it's not ego based. It's not any of that. I mean, oh my God, no, I'm never going to be a celebrity. Anybody that calls me that, you know, needs to swallow that word back down their throat. I'm just Annie. Um, everybody that knows me knows that about me, um, that I don't have uh, anything to prove. I don't have, you know, I'm not here to coerce anybody into believing anything. Everyone is free to use, you know, their own God-given mind to um, interpret anything that they want in whatever way that they want. If what I say resonates with them, that's wonderful. If it doesn't, flip the channel. You know, it's I, I just, uh, I'm, I'm not about, I'm not impressed with, nor am I imposed upon by uh, social media. Um, it's just a venue. It's an avenue for me to be in touch with people who are like-minded. Um, mm -hmm. I think it does more harm than good um, generally, um, but it's also a way for me to put my work out there and my opinions out there and, and my messages, more important than anything, my messages out in a way that is easily accessible. Um, and so uh, that's the only reason why I, I even use it and have the platforms that I utilize because uh, I, I can't even keep up with them. I mean, I have five paces, pages on Facebook and I'm, I'm thousands and thousands of messages behind. And I feel terrible about that, but I'm only one person. And, you know, the mm -hmm. ones that they get me the most, I've written five books in 10 years. Okay. And the messages that I love the most are, when are you going to write another book? And I'm like, you know, if I wasn't busy answering a thousand messages, then I would probably have time to do that. Um, you know, and it's, uh, you know, not to, to uh, diminish them in any way, because every mm -hmm. single person that reaches out to me uh, reaches out because they've got a story too. And, and I appreciate that. And I, you know, eventually I get back to everybody. Eventually I do. Um, but the thing is that I think the, the purpose that the trilogy, certainly, mm -hmm. um, house of darkness, house of light, the purpose that it has served, um, out in the world is that it liberates people to tell their own story. Those that have kept it hidden, those that have kept it inside and have been, you know, questioning their own sanity or mm -hmm. questioning their own perceptions or um, just afraid to share it because they don't want to be dismissed. They don't want to be berated. They don't want to be belittled. They don't want to be um, disregarded. And they mm -hmm. certainly don't want to be considered insane uh, in a world that already is insane. We don't need any more insanity added to the mix. Um, you know, so they keep it to themselves. And when they finish reading the trilogy, I think an, an awful lot of them consider what it took uh, in terms of personal courage of not just myself, but my entire family mm -hmm. to share our story in such um, a meaningful and significant way. It, you know, they, they look at it and, and say, well, you know, if, if they can share all of this, then it's okay for me to tell my story. Mm -hmm. And I think that what they find when they begin to share their own experiences is that others 
have mm -hmm. had like experiences. There are millions of us on this planet, multi-millions, incalculable numbers of people that have been touched by spirit, people that have had some type of a close encounter of one type or another. Um, and it is difficult to wrap our mortal minds around. It truly is. I get it. So I understand when people come up to me and just I just wrap them in my arms and they begin to sob, just spontaneously sob. And I'll just lean over and say, give me your pain. I'll just whisper in their ears, give me your pain. I won't hold on to it. It will disperse, but give it to me as if you're giving me a gift so that you don't have to bear the burden anymore. And then once you've done that and we've dried your tears, tell me your story because I believe you. I believe you. Your emotional outburst, for lack of a better word, the eruption of emotion when people meet me for the first time and feel that sense that I can be trusted with their truth. Mm -hmm. um, is a release in its own right, which is why I think people get so emotional when they meet me. Um, it's not that I'm making them cry or I'm, you know, forcing anything out of them at all. I'm an open vessel. I'm a conduit for their information to come through me and for whatever pain that they are burdened by to actually be expelled Mm -hmm. through me and out and away so that it does not impair me in any way and that they are liberated from it. Um, and, and I think that that's a gift that I give willingly to every human being that I encounter. Do you think that being a star child um, enhanced your experience at the house? Yes. Yes. And I think the house is what led me into the beginning rudimentary understanding that I was a star child. Interesting. Very interesting. There's a point of correlation and integration between mm -hmm. spirit and extraterrestrials. And if you really think about it, spirits are extraterrestrials. They are no longer in a human flesh and blood vessel and yet they retain numerous characteristics that they possessed in life. Um, and, and very often including their own personal mindset mm -hmm. when they manifest in form, they are often dressed in the clothing of their age and era. Um, they have um, retained some kind of a, a cosmic fingerprint on this planet, an imprint that was left behind. Um, I believe that they are here because at least, you know, I don't know for sure, but I think perhaps they um, remain behind earthbound in some way for a number of reasons. And one of those reasons could very well be what we've all heard before, the notion of unfinished business right when they died or um the concept that they either died so suddenly or so tragically that they're not even actually completely aware that they're dead mm -hmm. they're just in another realm and so they gravitate to gravity they gravitate to earth because it's familiar Interesting. and um and the other notion that I have considered at length is the, the hypothesis that those from hundreds of years ago, mm -hmm. I mean, suicides frowned upon now. Mm -hmm. um, but if you think back, you know, 100, 200, 300 years ago, that act was considered blasphemy, um, you know, a sin against God. Um, taking your own life was not an option. If you did it, you were going to burn in hell, fire and brimstone for all of eternity. 
So it seems to me, again, fear-based, I mean, I think fear exists in the spirit realm as well, mm -hmm. um, that when they actually perished from the planet in terms of this vessel that we each carry, that they were afraid to go to the light because they didn't know if the light was eternal salvation or eternal damnation. Hmm. Do you have um, any recollections of being aboard any ships or anything like that? Yes. Yep, I do. Um, I do. And they're phenomenal experiences. Absolutely wonderful experiences. I have never had a moment of an experience off planet, whether it be in a vessel or elsewhere that hasn't been thoroughly enlightening, absolutely comfortable, um, peaceful, and um, that I didn't remember every single little tiny detail of. Um, <clears throat> I've been in a vessel that was, it, it didn't even seem like a vessel to me. It was completely, I wouldn't say it was glass, but it was completely, um, clear. I could see through, I know I was encased in something mm -hmm. that I could not see that I could see out of and through. And where I was, was a lot of technology. Where I was sitting was a lot of technology. And I remember rising up out of a funky kind of chair, not a chair like we're used to, but kind of a, almost like a little cloud cushion mm -hmm. and standing up and leaning forward. And I had my dog, Gracie Pearl with me um, who has passed on. So she's out there somewhere waiting for me. She's with my sister right now, um, out in the, out there. Um, and just as we're coming in to the atmosphere of this blue planet, I'm looking at this going, oh, this is it. And I could see the two moons, but I could see them and they looked like they were you know, one was very large and one was mm -hmm. much smaller, but they were kind of side by side, but they're in different orbits. So they're not always side by side. They're in different orbits. One is much, the smaller one is much farther away from the planet. That was the one that we passed first. The larger one was closer to the planet. No, the, no, I'm sorry, reverse that. The littler one was in a much closer orbit than the larger one was, which was mm -hmm. quite a bit further away. But when you see them together, they look like mother and child. They look like they're like could hold hands, you know, they're that close. Um, but they're not actually, that's not the truth of their orbits. Mm -hmm. um, I've been to uh, one of the moons of Jupiter uh, the reason that I know that is because it was one of the closer moons. And when I looked off at the horizon, I could only see half of Jupiter, only wow. half of it. Uh, and the rest of it was below the horizon. Um, and I have been elsewhere in the universe, sometimes in places that sort of resemble Earth and Earth things and Earth places and mm -hmm. Earth structures and Earth plants and but it's not earth. I know that it's not earth. There's no place on earth that looks quite like it. It's like, I like to think of it as alternate earth. Um, you know, like other earth. Could um, it be, I mean, could it, could it be them kind of recreating it to make you, to make people like you feel more relaxed? I don't need to feel more relaxed. I'm fascinated okay. by everything that I well, I'm just saying, you know, to, to give yeah. you more of a familiar feeling when, when, when you're there. Yeah, no. Um, I don't think so. I, I think that I just go places that mm -hmm. um, I'm already familiar with. Okay. Uh, and it's like they just give me a free ride <laughs> when I'm feeling particularly overwhelmed by Earth 
when I'm feeling particularly overwhelmed by the events on earth, right. um, that I get a little bit, it's, it's like a little escape hatch, okay. you know, it's like, okay, here come, let us remind you that it's okay. And when you go back, it'll be fine and just keep doing what you're doing and, you know, don't give up, just mm -hmm. keep going. You know, I, uh, I got, I got really, really aggravated uh, a few weeks ago um, when I was watching a report about um, the Delta variant um, that was, you know, increasingly making its presence known in the United States and mm -hmm. how many people are dying from it unnecessarily because we're awash in vaccines, a wash mm -hmm. in vaccines. You can get a vaccine anywhere. Um, and yet people are not availing themselves of it. So all of these deaths are entirely unnecessary. And I, you know, I got um, really upset about it and really upset about the release of the you know, that just it's just a scathing indictment that I feel for the Department of Defense for what they released around what they call UAPs, which is mm -hmm. unidentified aerial phenomena um, that is so redacted that it serves no actual purpose. And the handful of people that have access to what's in it that is redacted are certainly not going to share it. It was a ruse, right. just like I knew that it would be a ruse because they don't have any confidence in, in our ability to accept new information. And it's just, um, you know, they're just the lying liars that lie. It's what they do. And I, and I, I don't, I, I mean, we deserve the truth. We deserve to know everything about, you know, the number of visitations, the, you know, the myriad species, the, you know, all, I mean, we deserve to know everything. And, you know, yes, I'm, I am personally privy to information that most people don't have. Mm -hmm. um, and by sharing it as willingly as I do, I leave myself open and vulnerable and susceptible. Uh, and I'm aware of that, but I'm, I'm only telling the truth. Mm -hmm. And so if I'm going to be scrutinized, which I know that I am, if I'm going to be monitored, which I know that I am, um, that's fine. I, you know, I'll tell anybody anything about what I've experienced and who I, who I've encountered and what different, you know, races or species, whatever, you know, word in the vernacular you choose to use, um, you know, my encounters, my close encounters lifelong since I was a child, you know, I came to this world with, you know, an inherent DNA baked in hard drive understanding that I was different. I was mm -hmm. different. Um, and, and it took me a very long time to really grasp how very different I am. But once I did, it liberated me to speak my truth so that others could feel that same sense of freedom to talk about their own um, experiences, their own contact, their own encounters, whether it be with spirit or whether it be with the galactic family, mm -hmm. whether it be with elementals, whether it be, you know, whatever that it is, this is, you know, most people compartmentalize their existence on planet Earth um, and want to live in a three-dimensional, five-sensory realm. Mm -hmm. They deliberately stay in the box because it's easier. And right. life is complicated enough. Life is difficult enough. You know, it's like everything is trial by fire. Everything mm -hmm. is a new challenge. Everything is a new obstacle. Life is like a series of problems to be solved. Mm -hmm. And so I get it, you know, not only stepping outside that box, but acknowledging that you live 
outside that box is a really huge quantum leap for most people. It's much easier to remain relegated to this plane of action. And, mm -hmm. you know, like, no, I didn't really see that. That didn't really happen. That had to have been my imagination. It must have been a dream. Uh, I don't know what that was, but I don't want to think about that anymore. Shove it into the back of, you know, this computer thing that we've got called a brain. Um, hide it in the back recesses of our mind, which is different than the brain. Um, because there's an infinite mind that we all tap into. Mm -hmm. um, I say that with some authority um, because that's something that I know. I don't know everything. Certainly no right. one does. There are no experts in this field or any other, really. I mean, even science, all existing science now was once pseudoscience. Right. So, you know, we're all in, you know, that evolutionary uh, process of, you know, discovering more and more and more. You know, I've, I've always said magic is just science we don't yet understand, right. you know, but right. everything is math and science. Everything is, you know, that's the, the whole universal structure is built on these uh, concepts that are, you know, we're able to, I mean, even the, um, the crop circles that have been deciphered are binary code. I just, I happen to be able to look at a crop circle and I know what the message is from it. It's a message. It's not just gorgeous galactic art. There is a message in it. I can read light language. I understand when I have a vessel that's in front of me and the lights from it are pulsing in a certain way, um, in a certain series, you know, whether it be staccato or whether it be like a soft enveloping of, you know, one light becoming another light or, you know, I understand on some level what that message is that's being imparted to me, but I cannot tell you specifically what the messages are. I just, I absorb them. Mm -hmm. And then, oh, when I'm, you know, standing in front of a few hundred people telling them about my experiences, something will come out of my mouth that I did not consciously think about before I actually said it. Mm -hmm. And so that's when I'm tapping in to cosmic message that I get to be the conduit to impart. And so that's my job. Now, something I'm curious about is which aliens are the ones that, 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 that take you? I don't know. Okay. Just I curious. mean, I, I have connections with, I, hi, sweetheart. Hi. Oh, hold on just a second. Peanut Absolutely. wants to say hello. Come here, baby. There's my baby. Oh, that's my baby. This there is my we peanut go. buttercup. Hi, this sweetheart. is my baby dog. This is my sweet baby dog. Oh, my God. You are so precious. Hi, um, sweetheart. It's your number one is. fan. That's who it is. It's your number yeah, one fan. She is. She's like, oh, mom, you've been on the computer for hours and hours. Uh -huh. You know, I was in hours of meetings in California before I actually came on your show in there California. There we go. You know, so I've been on. Ca I've been in California all day, babe. I'm See sorry. That? I'll play with you later. I will. I swear. Oh, don't lick my lip lard off. I need that for the show. I need it. I know. It's so sweet. Um, I know that I am I am connected to the angelic realm. Mm -hmm. um, angels absolutely exist. They're a, a race of extraterrestrials. Um, fairies absolutely exist. They are extraterrestrials. Um, I am in touch with the Arcturians which are light beings. They are the brainiacs of the universe. Um, uh, I have seen, they appear as balls of light in a vortex. I have photographs. Um, I am absolutely in touch with what I think is home base for me, which is somewhere in the Pleiades, mm -hmm. um, where the tall whites come from. What, or we call the tall whites, um, also light beings. Um, 
and I've seen grays, which get a really bad reputation. Um, they are partially humanoid, partially artificial intelligence. Um, but they are, you know, I won't say, I, I don't think of them as, even though they're the ones like Whitley Strieber credits with abducting mm -hmm. him and his family and um, experimentation on humans. I mean, you notice that that's virtually stopped around the planet. And the reason that it has is because um, you know, other species have told them, stop that, that's upsetting to humanity. But they don't think of it that way because they're scientists. Right. And so they study humanity in the same way that we study a fire ant bed to figure out how deep it goes and you know how, how they work together and you know what their life cycle is and you know so on and so forth i mean i don't think that they're deliberately ever trying to harm any of us i think that um they're just connecting with those that they might even in some way be responsible for bringing to the planet um i think that in some respect all of us all humanity is a hybrid. I think that we're a collection of beings who have come here through them. Um, Interesting. And I think that it's, I, I try to be careful about this because a lot of what I share could very easily fracture people's mm -hmm. well instilled belief systems. Mm -hmm. um, and so when I talk about it, I try to talk about it in a very pragmatic and less emotional way because I'm not here to take a sledgehammer to anyone's belief system. I mean, all of us function, all of us mm -hmm. function with some form of a belief system or another. Mm -hmm. Even atheists have a belief system and their belief is that God does not exist. Right. So it, you know, I, I'm very careful about that because, you know, I, I'm not here to offend. I'm not here to do anything but help expand human consciousness mm -hmm. um, and to impart what messages I receive. Um, but... I personally, I will say that I personally believe that um, an entity named Jesus Christ lived on the earth, mm -hmm. left quite an impression, um, and was here to teach us to love each other and to be kind and to live in a way where we do no harm. I think Hippocrates was uh, a light being. I think many of the great prophets and philosophers, I think Nikola Tesla was mm -hmm. from off world. Um, Buckminster Fuller, off world. Gene Roddenberry, off world. Absolutely. Carl Sagan, off world. Yes. And the list goes on and on and on. Whether or not they were ever aware of it, the messages that they imparted, the technology mm -hmm. that they brought to the world, the, you know, the Prince of Peace, his existence on this planet prompted a war called the Crusades where it's estimated that 10 million people were massacred for not believing in him. Well, isn't that, you know, the antithesis of mm -hmm. what the message was? Isn't that completely and utterly counterintuitive to what the message was? Um, I hate to say this, but um, I hold a glimmer of hope for humanity, but only a glimmer. Um, and I think that it is, I mean, if a global pandemic didn't equalize the field, if, mm -hmm. you know, watching a, a man killed under the knee, the knee of a police officer 
um, didn't change the discourse and the dynamic as much as mm -hmm. it needed to. What will it take for us to awaken to the realization of oneness mm -hmm. that we are all in this together? The, uh, that we are one race, that we are all brothers and sisters. Yes, evil does exist in the world. Yes, it is not counterintuitive to be a spiritual warrior for peace. Yes, there are some fights worth having mm -hmm. um, because there is this eternal conflict that exists in our realm between good and evil and darkness and light. Mm -hmm. And yet one cannot exist without the other. But good always conquers evil. If it hasn't in the end, it's not the end. Right. Um, and light always vanquishes the darkness. Love conquers fear. You know, love and fear are polar opposites. People think it's love and hate. It's not. Uh -huh. Hatred is born of fear. Um, you know, once we learn to embrace fear mm -hmm. and use it as the tool that it should be in our lives, you know, that little tap on the shulder of, oh, you probably shouldn't do that. You probably shouldn't go there. You got the other you guy. Don't the other really side. know yeah. him well. Don't get in that car. Yeah. You know, that that's the purpose that it should serve. But when we allow it, you know, when we relinquish our personal power to it, when the fear of the unknown literally envelops our our personality and our character and begins to rule us, when we relinquish our personal power to mm -hmm. fear, we cease living fully. I mean, how many people have died on this planet who in their last moments of consciousness in this form mm -hmm. review their lives and wish that there were things that they would have had the courage to do and experience before they left? Absolutely. Absolutely. Hey, you know, the thing about the light beings, that's kind of interesting to me because, and I don't know if it's the direct, the director of like the, like the poltergeist movies, but if you remember um, the one scene in the poltergeist movies, when the, when, when they catch them on camera coming down the stairwell mm -hmm. and there are those shafts of bright light coming down the stairwell one after the other. So mm -hmm. I don't know if that was a subconscious thing for the director or what, but when, when you were describing the light beings to me, that's what came to mind. Yeah. Yeah. In connection um, with the paranormal. Well, you know, for years I thought Steven Spielberg put the shooting star, you know, or that captured, you know, that that shooting star from the yeah. from the boat in the yeah. and, no, he put that in there. He put that in there. That's actually in every movie that he's ever made. Hmm. Uh you just have to hunt for it. Um, you know, but that's his little wink, you know, to those of us who right. you know, it's uh yeah, it's every I you know I subsequently learned that every single thing that Steven Spielberg does is absolutely deliberate, um, including the shafts of light. Right. Um, but uh, you know that was one of the experiences. You know, I still to this day, Charlotte, I cannot tell you if everything that we experienced at that farmhouse was supernatural in terms of being ghosts or spirits. Mm -hmm. or if it was extraterrestrial in nature, if it was elemental in nature, I still mm -hmm. can't tell you all that it was, that it still is, mm -hmm. is what is so miraculous and marvelous and remarkable and magical to me. Um, in the same way that, you know, only one of the spirits in the house ever self-identified, only one. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, you know, the rest of them, it was more of a, educated or even an uneducated guess as to who they might have been in life. To me, it doesn't matter who they were in life, right. that they still are in afterlife is what matters to me. Fascinating. Man, this hour blew by. We did it again. <laughs> 
and uh, we got you booked for one more. Remember, we planned on three, so she's yes. definitely going to be back. We're going to be talking about the house. This thing, with, this thing with your alien experiences is just absolutely fascinating to me, and um, you know because there's a lot of fear there. There's a lot, of, you know, there's a lot of those, like you say, there's a lot of those rumors and stories about the yeah. experiments and all this, and people are afraid and and all this is going on. But you're the second person that I've I've talked to in the last month that put a positive spin on it. As far as you know, well, as far it's as not as even it's not spin. It's, right. you know, you know uh, what I, mean, though. I put them in a positive light right. because positive that's light. where they are. You know, they are the light. And yeah. um, to me, that's the truth. You know, that to me, that's that's the great mystery and the great truth of them. Um, and we're the ones that discolor it with negative energy mm -hmm. and suspicion and, you know, uh, imposing the notion on them that they are somehow posing a threat to us. No, they don't. No, they don't. Because if they were a threat, logic dictates that that, that threat would have already been carried out millennia uh -huh. ago. They've been here forever. They've always been here. We're all, we're all a part of, of them. They are a part of us. We are one. That mm -hmm. is the most important message. And they might look a little different than us um, in different ways, you know, and they might manifest in different forms. But, you know, when we open our hearts and our mind to their existence and allow them in and feel that higher cosmic love and connection with them, mm -hmm. that will, when we do that in great enough numbers, it will change the world. It will. For the better. Absolutely. Well, you know, I've always felt, I don't know if I told you this last time I talked to you, but um, after reading a lot of the uh, uh, books on, on different visitations and, and abductions and what happened after the abductions, I've always had back in my mind that maybe as a ghost hunter, that we're not really hunt, hunting ghosts, that, that, that it's the aliens we're hunting. Because it's the same MO. They can go through, you know, they, 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 they can manifest through walls. Uh, you know, and, and, and people rising off the ground, you know, rising off of beds and stuff. And so I've always kind of felt like that in the back of my mind. Yeah, they are not confined um, or defined uh -huh. by this realm. Um, and and I don't know. I don't ever refer to it as hunting because right. that has such a negative connotation. Right. You know, that's it's uh, sounds very aggressive <laughs> to yeah. me. Um, um, I use, uh, a different language around them, um, around investigating. connecting, yeah. Yeah. yeah, investigating, connecting, engaging, right. uh, you know, more passive language, um, you know, because it sounds like when we refer to it as hunting, that we're the threat, you know, Off and go, yeah. yeah. And, you know, maybe <laughs> in a lot of ways we are, I mean, look what the government just did in terms of putting out such limited information about well, them. You know, is, you know, like everything else, like, like with, with, well, now at least there's laws protecting Sasquatch. Right. Yeah. And what what's the first thing that the scientists want to do when they, when they find something like that, they want to dissect it, kill it, and dissect yeah. it, kill it, drag it home, yeah. take a look at it. Yeah. yeah. So in a lot of ways we are worse than they are. Yes. Uh, yeah. In every conceivable way we are yeah. worse than they are because we are infants in the universe. Mm -hmm. And if we do not begin to evolve much more rapidly, we will literally cause ourselves to go extinct. The earth will go on. She'll survive us. We can't survive without her. We don't have Absolutely. plan B or planet B. So, well, you know, it's time for us to wake up and it's my job to shake up the world in whatever gentle loving way that i can sometimes i'm not so gentle and loving about <laughs> it because i get so frustrated and, and downright angry and i burn that as jet fuel um you know but uh yeah we've got a long way to go and we've got a lot to learn um and so i'm just here as you know think of me as kind of a school mom well, you look know, at the perfect example dismissed. of that, too, is like during this pandemic, when we were all on lockdown, all the water systems that cleared up. Yeah. You know, and all the forests and green. I know my backyard. I've never seen because the air was so clean, you know, because there mm -hmm. weren't any cars out. I've never seen the grass grow in my backyard as fast as it did during mm -hmm. this pandemic. And I mean, there were that's people a, that live in the middle of India 
that are a stone's throw away from the Himalayas that had never seen them before yeah. the pandemic because everybody settled down. The air cleared. Uh, there was a hole in the ozone layer over uh, the Arctic that closed. It closed yeah. spontaneously. And the scientists are saying, oh, no, it couldn't have healed that fast. It can't be because of the pandemic. Well, okay, mm -hmm. you know what? Prove to me that it's not. All right? Yeah. Prove to me that it's not us stopping what we're doing to this planet that mm -hmm. gave it a chance to breathe. Yep. That's a wake-up call, a huge wake-up call. And they're yeah. just not seeing it, you know? Yeah, but look how fast we're, you know, regressing back into yep. the same behavior. The yeah. same, you know, I mean, we've got... We didn't learn anything. There, there, there was nothing learned. We've got a long way to go. The signs were right. In front, yeah, go. the signs were right in front of us, and there was nothing learned. Right. Out of it. All right, Andrea. Thank you so much for coming on, and we're going to have a round three, which is going to be kind of fun. Yes. And I'm going to show a link to your third book, but I mean, you guys can get all three of her books at Amazon. Yeah. So, um, you know, don't worry about that. But uh, it's, it's always great to have her on. She's a very busy lady, so it's an honor to have her on and, and just get scheduled with her. In fact, probably after this, we're going to hunker down over our calendars and go, no, nope, no, nope, can't do that. No, nope. okay, let's try that. You know, <laughs> okay, let's try that. <laughs> Okay. to get an interview in but it's always fun to have you on and i appreciate you coming on to be, you know to, 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 to talk about this stuff and i just i just think you're an absolutely fascinating lady and thank you so much thank you for having me and thank you to all of your viewers i appreciate you joining me in my netherworld <laughs> okay i will uh i'll get back with you in a few minutes okay okay all right guys thanks so much you can see I've been fumbling with the camera today. I've been trying to try some new angles and stuff. But thank you guys for coming today. And uh, again, uh, Andrea will be with us again next month for another interview, for another fun, another fun, informative interview. I've learned a lot from her the last two interviews that, that I've had her on. But I want to thank you guys, and I will see you at well, yes, and be sure to share this. If you don't like the show, share it with five people. If you like the show, share it with five people. And come visit us over on our YouTube channel. Uh, just Google California Haunts YouTube and we'll pop right on up. You feel the need to donate to help us out a little bit to stay on the air and get some really cool guests. PayPal.me at California Haunts is the address to do that. Anyway, I want to thank you guys for coming and I'm going to go ahead and show you where you can get contact Andrea and uh, get her book and all yeah, her books, plural, and all that stuff. And then we're going to close the show out. We got a website. It's for you guys that are on the podcast. And we're waiting for the site to come up. Get your pens out. Get your pens and pencils out and some paper. You write this down. www.houseofdarkness.com And that's House of Darkness houseoflight.com see i got it right this time house of darkness house of light.com okay write that down and you can contact andrea over there or just google her name and here's one of her three books and again those are available at amazon and that's house of darkness house of light is the, are the books and those are available at amazon there you go, www.amazon.com. And as soon as that's down, you're going to hear our closing credits, and you'll be rid of me for another week.